Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss about uh, Aoster algorithm. So, so for whatever graph that we have discussed, our, uh, our, your R graph. Okay, like you have your water jet problem. Like what happened with water jet problem? We have an initial state and uh, we have to fill the water. Okay, it might be either 5 liter and 3 liter jug. When I want to fill the water, I will be either filling 5 liter jug or filling 3 liter jug. Okay, and next time when it is pi comma zero, the next possibility is either I'll be filling this three liter jug or I can empty this content in this three liter jug or I can swap the water from five to three. So I'll be having two here and three here. So this is how your water jet problem or whatever problem that we have discussed works on. Okay, so this is called an R graph. Okay, the graph that we have considered, it is called an R graph. The reason is, we take either this path or this path, okay? But when it comes to the real-time examples, the graphs will not be same as your R graph alone. So we'll be having some and or graph too. So and or graph is something like, uh, I'll give you an example. So when we want to play football, so this is the task. You want to play football. So first we have to check the climate now. Okay, so whether it is good weather is there or not. When it is a good weather and if there is an availability of port, okay, if the court is available, then we can go ahead on playing football. And again, when it comes to your court availability, you may have a public court or private one. When it is a private one, we should have already booked it and paid for it. Okay, so this is your AND. Okay, so AND is something like we have to consider both the criterias. For playing football, good weather is also important and the court availability is also important. And when it comes to your court availability, there might be public or private one. So it is R. So here it is R. So AND is connected like this. Both the task has to be completed. And when it is your private code we are going to book for, it has to be booked and the price has to be paid. So you are going for this AND possibility over here. Okay, so this is AND or graph. And the algorithm that you're going to discuss is same as that of your Aster algorithm with some modification since it has to work for this AND or graph, right? So how does your Aster works? Uh, each time a function f of n is based on, we are going to calculate the cost function based on the a uh, heuristic value along with the path cost. Okay, for each node, we'll be calculating this heuristic function and the path cost. And based on the minimal path cost, we are going to proceed on it. So here, one more place thing, one more uh, thing that we are going to discuss in AOSTAR is, uh, once it reaches the destination, we are trying to calculate, recalculate the heuristic value from the backwards. Okay, so what ASTAR do it, it is going to start from the starting node, explore or the path based on this heuristic function cost value that is calculated. And it is going to reach the goal state with the total cost. Okay, but what an Aster algorithm does now, it starts from the initial state. It keep on doing until it reaches a minimum value of a goal state. And once it reaches, it tries to recalculate the path, path cost. Okay, we, re we recalculate, update all the path cost until uh, we can reach a minimum path cost as a whole. Okay, I'll just take you an example. I'll show you how it is working. So I'll just take this graph. We have a starting state, yes. Um, a, B, C node connected for... Uh, is your thing I take the path cost as one for all heuristic function I can vary in have five here or six here and some value of 10 here and this is and connection okay and you have C I am just going to use all possibilities okay with the minimal graph I'm going to use all possibilities All the path cost, I'm going to take it as one for all. And the heuristic value will be varying. Um, let me take it as four, five. You can have five and seven. Okay, I'm going to proceed on searching this three. 
So I'm going to start from the starting node. So all those values are already fixed. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to explore the starting node. Uh, while exploring the starting node, when it is an AND graph, see, when I have an uh, AND graph like this, this is one path to be taken as a whole. Okay. So this need to be treated separately. We'll be having five here, six here, path cost of one. And S tends to C is a separate path, 1 and 10. So what will be the cost factor for this? When it is an AND, you have to add up all. Heuristic value of A, path cost of A, and heuristic value of B, path cost from S to B. So S, A, B is a path, and the path cost is 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 6. Okay, so you have 11, 12, 13, right? The path cost over here is 13. And another path is S to C and the cost for path is 1 plus 10. Since it is an R, we have only one possibility. 1 plus 10 is 11. So we are going to take the minimal value of these two. 13 and 11. So 11 is the minimum one. So we are going to explore this C again. Okay, so this is how your algorithm works. Okay, and let me take this as well an AND condition. Now, what happened? Have you calculated uh, the function, the cost function for C? Okay, a very important function here is uh, when you are exploring this tree, okay, it is an AND. What does this AND actually mean? So you have to take it as a single possible cost. So C to F to G as a single path cost and the cost is 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 7 and that is equal to it's 12, 13, 14. Okay, so 14 is the path cost for this possible leaf node, uh, this subtree. You can consider it as a subtree. Okay, so now again, we reach the finishing stage, right? There is no successor for these kind of trees once after completing this process. If you have a successor, we can proceed on. Okay, taking the minimum value. If there is a tree structure for G, you have to proceed on like this each and every step. Now, we don't have any successor for G or F, so we stop the process over here. And now I'm going to recalculate this heuristic value of C. Already the heuristic value of C is given as 10. Now, after reaching this goal state, you have this recalculated heuristic value as 14. Okay, the cost path, actual cost for this node is calculated as 14. And we are going to project it to the top of it. Okay, for S, we have taken this minimum of either this branch. Uh, this branch uh, path cost is 13 and this branch path cost which is already calculated as 14 is now because 11 it has become 14 right now after taking up this uh, recalculated value over here. Now comparing these two you have 13 as the minimum value so we have to explore the branch for AB again. Okay so while exploring the branch for AB what happened uh, for S you have A and B. For B, you don't have any branch. For A, you have a branch. So we have to explore the path for A. And this is an R graph. So when it is an R graph, what we do? From A to D, the path cost is 1 plus 4. Okay, for A to D, the path cost is calculated as 5. I'm sorry, 5. 4 plus 1 is 5. And here, A to E, the path cost is calculated as 5 plus 1, 6. Okay, now this is an R graph. So you have to take the minimum value of 5 or 6 anything. Okay, since there is no successor for D and E, we can stop the process over here. And out of this, we can say that 5 has the minimum value. Like from A to D, it is 5 and uh, A to E, it is 6. So the minimum path cost is 5. So the recalculated heuristic value, the path cost value is also 5. And we can project it to the top. While projecting to the top, it is going to be the same. For S, when you are calculating it, it will be like 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 6. Now 13 will be the value. So the minimum value will be 13. We are going to take this, proceed on this path. Okay. So this is how our AO star algorithm works. So AO star algorithm, whenever it finds a minimum path, possible path to reaching the goal state, it will stop the process. Whereas A star algorithm will explore all possibilities. So we can say that A star is more efficient. It is going to give a... Optimal solution each and every time, whereas in AO star, when a minimum solution is obtained, see here in this place, rather than this is what an example I have taken here, rather than this, if 
we have this minimum value of the path as uh, this node alone, we don't actually explore this A and D alone. All. Okay, so each time it is going to take a single level, calculate the minimum value. And based on that level's value, we don't redo it. Okay, so once after uh, reaching, like in case if this minimum value calculated over here is still 11, after all this recalculation, then we don't explore this path of AD at all. Okay, so that is your ASTER algorithm. So once we reach a minimum path out of a single branch, we don't proceed on going for the next possibility. Now, this is a pseudocode for AOSTER algorithm. So we are going to calculate the minimum cost path from the starting node to gold node. If the gold node is fixed, we are going to go ahead with the gold node. Or else we can proceed it like uh, until we reach the last leaf nodes. Okay, so we are going to start from the starting node as current node and we are trying to find the path when it is an AND arc. This is very important. When it is an AND arc, uh, we are going to sum up all the costs of AND arc. And when it is an OR, we are going to return a single cost of the minimal path. So we are going to find the minimum cost, successor node of minimum cost and we do this. This is your reverse node. We are going to back propagate the current estimated cost from the leaf node on. Okay, so once we reach the starting node, we are going to return this process again and again. So until the gold state is found, until a minimum path is formed, we are going to proceed on working like this. So this is how your ASTER algorithm works. Sorry, AOSTER algorithm works. Okay, thank you.